Making Minecraft Part 2 Last time we generated a bunch of rotating grass blocks. Wait, what do you mean you haven't washed it? Don't you wash stuff in order? This time we're gonna focus on lighting. We start off by changing our grass texture into this. Why? Because I'm still bad at transformations and this is gonna help me understand how they work. I also changed the vertices array by moving the cube's origin from its center to its corner. This may seem unnecessary, but I promise it's gonna be useful later. Probably. Let's also stick to drawing a single cube for now. And there we go. Okay, I agree, it looks like we're moving backward instead of making progress. Let's fix that by working on the camera movement. Before moving our camera, we need to know its position and its target. From that we can calculate the camera's direction. Then we can use the cross product to find its right vector and its up vector. In other words, our camera will have its own coordinate plane, and its direction will be its z-axis. And now pay close attention. We're gonna delete everything we've written. Then we're gonna use the GLM function to calculate the view matrix. For now we're gonna move the camera around the cube. And it's working. Yeah, it doesn't look that impressive. Let's try adding more cubes. In order to do that, we need to manually write down positions for every single cube. And as a lazy person, I feel offended. So instead we're gonna write this monstrosity of code that generates random numbers. There we go. It's still not enough though. More. 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 Oh, too much. Go back. Perfect. Since we're rotating the camera, why not rotate the cubes as well? We just need to rotate every cube's model matrix. Alright, look at that. Oh wait, hold on. Stop. Stop. I forgot that the rotation is relative. And now it's fixed. Hey, how come they're rotating around the edge and not the center? Um, because it looks better? <sighs> okay, fine. I came up with the dumbest solution possible, which is moving the cube by half a unit, rotating it, and moving it back. And for some stupid reason, it worked. See? Sometimes being smart is being stupid. Alright, I think it's time we start controlling the camera. Moving the camera forwards and backwards is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna move the camera along the Z axis, which is its current direction. Now moving the camera sideways is gonna be slightly complicated. We need to calculate left and right vectors relative to the camera's current direction. This is called strafing by the way. To do that, we're gonna cross multiply our camera's direction and the vector that's pointing upwards. You keep talking about the cross product, do you even know what it means? Hell no! But it doesn't matter because it works. Right now our game is controlled by the frame rate, which means it'll run faster or slower depending on your hardware. And since we don't like inequality, we're gonna fight for independence. In other words, we're gonna introduce delta time. We will update the game every 16 milliseconds, which is 60 frames per second. Obviously nothing has changed except the cube started rotating slower. Since I want to flex that I know C++ better than the average person, I decided to put everything we've written in a game class. And now our main file looks a lot cleaner. Right now we're controlling the camera's position. Why not control its direction as well? For that we're gonna use Euler angles. We have pitch for looking up and down, we have yaw for looking left and right, and we have roll for doing the barrel roll. We're not gonna use it though. To calculate the direction, we're gonna use the ancient method of taking sine and cosine of pitch and yaw. If we take the difference between the current position of the mouse and the center of the screen as a hypotenuse, we'll get a triangle. And the legs of that triangle will be our pitch and yaw. Alright, let's see. Wow, what the hell? Let's lower the sensitivity. There we go. Remember how I said I made a game class? Well, I don't mean to brag, but I also made a camera class. Real quick, this video is sponsored by my Patreon page. If you want to gain access to devlogs of my future projects and videos, including the source code of this project, consider becoming a member. Now let's go back to the video. Now we can finally start working on lighting. Our light source needs to have a realistic looking texture. It also needs to have its own texture object, vertex array object, transformation matrix, and a shader. While I was setting up the new vertex array, I realized that the code was turning into a mess. So I decided to put everything in separate functions. How hard can it be? What? Who are you? I'm you from the future. Okay, what are you doing here? Don't do it. Uh, you mean this? But it's gonna save us time. I haven't slept in three days. Alright, here's our light source next to our grass block. 
I made it smaller by half because reasons. I also changed the color of the sky so it's midnight. Now in order to add light to our grass block, we just need to multiply its texture by our light color in the fragment shader. The light's color will be bright yellow. At first it may seem like nothing has changed. Because you're right, nothing has changed. Since our grass texture doesn't have any blue color, and our light color is only changing the blue channel, we're not getting any results. But watch what happens if we change our light color to green. There we go. Here are the results with different light colors if you're curious. Now obviously multiplying our texture by one color doesn't sound like advanced lighting to me. So instead we're gonna use Fung Lighting, which is just a combination of three lighting methods. And the first one is called Ambient Lighting. Basically speaking, we're gonna assume that every place, no matter how dark it is, has some light in it. First we need to define its strength, which is usually a small amount. Then we just multiply it by our light color. Alright, now our grass block is filled with darkness, which is the complete opposite of what we wanted to do. So let's fix that. Next thing on our list is diffuse lighting. It will light the object based on the direction of the light source. First we need to add normals to our vertices array. These normals define the directions our block sides are facing. Then we calculate the vector from our fragment to the light source. Now we just have to calculate the dot product of these two vectors. Since both of them are unit vectors, we're gonna get a value between 0 and 1. This value defines how parallel these vectors are. All that's left to do is to multiply our light color by the dot product. This is so beautiful! To demonstrate to you how amazing this is, we're gonna rotate the block in every direction possible. Are you ready? 3, 2, 1, diffuse lighting! That's not working correctly. Since we're transforming the vertices, we need to transform the normals as well. So we take the model matrix, inverse it, transpose it, and matrix tree it. Then we multiply it by our normal. And now it's fixed! I wish I could swear right now because this is fantastic. The final thing on our list is specular lighting. It just makes the objects shiny by adding a bright spot. It may seem unnecessary since grass blocks don't shine, but we're gonna add it anyway. First we take the direction of the light and find its reflection on the surface defined by our normal. Then we take the camera's direction and find the dot product of these two vectors. In other words, we're calculating how directly we're looking at the light's reflection. By raising the dot product to a certain power, we can define the shininess of the highlight. Do you see it? It's there. It's just moving too fast, so let me slow it down for you. Now it looks like our grass block is made out of plastic. I think we can all agree that a single block is not enough to show how amazing this is. So let's increase the total number of blocks by a hundred. No, scratch that. By a thousand. Let's also move the light around just because we can. And let's hope my PC doesn't explode. Three, two, one. As always, thanks to my awesome Patreon supporters, especially Adam Kanzler, Kartoffelbauer1000, and Wayne Rasmussen. Don't forget to join our Discord server, and be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.